Welcome in guys, we're here for another monthly wrap up. I'm not gonna lie to you, my January started out super slow. I don't think I read a book until like January 12th or 13th. Literally didn't pick up a book for like two weeks because I was so busy. I snuck in a few at the end here. I got up to eight, which like isn't terrible. I read two today and I finished two yesterday. Yes, um, I read two very short ones today just to be able to add to my Goodreads goal because I didn't wanna have six in a month, so. Call me a cheater if you want. I don't care. I'm still going to talk about them because they were fun to read. Okay, so starting off, we started with a book club book. I read Darling Venom, which feels like literally forever ago. The month of January has lasted so long, but I gave Darling Venom a four out of five. I went into this completely blind, like absolutely had zero idea what it was about. I assumed it was a romance, but had zero idea what it was about. It could have been about vampires and I would have believed you. So that being said, the... Without giving it away, um, what happens in the first part really threw me for a loop. I don't think I've cried that hard at a book in months, maybe a year. I'm not even kidding. I was like hyperventilating. I had to take a break and like go downstairs and eat something and like drink some water because I was so upset. I don't know why I didn't see it coming. Like on the back, it almost tells you what happens. The front says my first love ended in tragedy. My second began with his brother. And I don't know why I didn't see it coming. The plot of this book is, I don't know, I don't remember their names. Kellen and what is her name? Why can't I find her name? Charlotte. So Kellen and Charlotte. Charlotte is very depressed, um, lost her parents. She lives with her sister who like kind of hates her. And so she's very depressed, very suicidal. She goes up to end her life on the school roof one night on her birthday, actually, February 14th. And she walks up and there's a boy up there, Kellen, who like is clearly also about to take his life. And they start like talking it out and they're like, you know what? Let's not do this and let's check on each other a year from now to see if we're still like if we still need help they go to the same school they're literally in the same class they see each other basically every day but refuse to talk to each other like they communicate through notes and like she'll leave him books and he'll leave her books and stuff like that but they meet ne again next year and they're both still here they're both still alive she gradually moves away from being suicidal and he kind of stays in it and he's like no like I still am not super happy so you can tell they kind of are developing feelings for each other and it's like very very awkward but like sweet very heartbreaking you know they like definitely love each other that kind of thing and you develop feelings for Kellen and then as it says on the book her first love ends in tragedy that's all I'm gonna say about it and then it jumps ahead like 10 years or so or five years or something I don't know and I couldn't handle that I literally couldn't handle it not knowing it was coming almost ruined the book for me like I it's not how I thought the book was gonna go at all and I didn't like it but like that being said in my head as I kept read it, reading I was like just pretend it's a different book act like what you read earlier that book's done it's over it's a zero star start a new book so I continue reading where she um, meets his like d-bag brother that he hated his whole life and then like she gets to know him blah 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 obviously this love story ends up being between them two and like they definitely grew on me but it was so hard for me to move past what happened in the beginning I was so heartbroken that it swayed my opinion on the book but that being said it was still a good book still a good love story I gave it a four out of five like it's definitely worth the read just go into it I feel like you should go into it knowing like some trigger warnings also because it upset me so I'm sure it will upset other people out there next was actually the next book club book was the do-over Lynn Painter um this is my second Lynn Painter book I read better than the movies and loved it so I read this one mainly because I wanted the cute sprayed edges but I actually really liked it I liked it a lot more than I thought I knew it was like a what's it called like a groundhog day trope where the day like repeated itself over and over again and I saw like reviews where where it got repetitive but I honestly didn't think so I really enjoyed the book I enjoyed the main characters I thought it was cutie I liked the ending I honestly didn't have much like bad to say about it other than like it wasn't some ridiculous five-star read like I really enjoyed it though I ended up giving this one a four out of five so Emily is dating this guy Josh in high school they're very similar he's like a nerd but like charming very smart head of the debate team stuff like that everything starts wrong on her Valentine's Day and she's like a hopeless romantic so she was really excited for Valentine's Day she like ends up hitting one of her classmates on the way so she's late to school has to ride with him catches um her boyfriend cheating on her and just like it goes downhill from there she goes home the day starts over so it's just like a constant reoccurring her catching him cheating continuously hitting this guy on the way to school and she's like if I could just avoid the wreck maybe like this won't happen so she ends up like leaning into it and so she says that like since my days are just gonna keep restarting 
I'm just gonna do whatever I want today since it's gonna restart tomorrow anyway like who cares so she has this day and she can kind of after like day after day of running into this guy at school and having to spend time with him she's like he's kind of like a nice guy and we sit next to each other in class so they go into class and like spend time together on these like day after day after day and so she is like I kind of want to hang out with him so on this day where she's like saying fuck it I'm gonna do whatever I want she ends up asking him to leave school and they spend this whole day together they really connect like they dive into like their childhood traumas and those she ends up like telling him she was like at midnight the day is gonna start over and like you're not gonna remember me type of thing and so like shocker the day doesn't start over it's actually very cute I really enjoyed it very short like quick read I think I read it in like two days it was very cute I liked it a lot next ugh, the end all be all I read A Court of Silver Flames, finally. So I finished the Akatar series. This was a five out of five star read for me. Oh my god. I understand, like, not everyone likes Nesta, and not everyone's, like, excited to read this. I wasn't excited to read this. I didn't want to read a book that wasn't from Favor's point of view. So I went into this not being excited. Like, you can tell the first, like, 200 pages, I didn't tab anything at all. I wasn't even planning on tabbing or annotating. And then the further we got in, I was like, I was obsessed with it. I was kicking my feet. I loved Cassian. I loved the trope and like the forced proximity. I just, I couldn't help it. I was obsessed with it. So I started tabbing. Oh my God, it was just insane. The story, the character arc that she has, her powers, so freaking cool. I was listening to some of this too on my way like to and from Charlotte. And I just would re-listen to chapters because I was like, Oh my god, it was so cool. I was obsessed with Cassian. Honestly, I think it's kind of rude that Sarah J Moss teased an Eiffel Tower situation and didn't give it to us, but that is neither here nor there. I will move on from that. <laughs> but this was such a good book. I also, like a part of me, I felt weird because obviously this is in Nesta's point of view. And we know Nesta doesn't like Resand. I'll say Resand. I say Rysan usually, but I know it's Resand. Get off my back. So I know she and Resand like don't get along. So seeing Resand from her POV, is like very almost alarming to me like he was a different character in this book to me like he almost came off as like rude and like not not who I'm in love with so that was the only thing that like really was jarring to me was seeing Rhysand from a different not from Feyre's point of view that was definitely weird to me seeing him from like not a perfect point of view like obviously I still love him and he's still my high lord but <laughs> oh god just the things that this book did to me I cried so hard I was so obsessed with her and Cassian amazing five out of five then I read a book on my kindle I read behind the net which I had heard really good things about and obviously in my hockey romance era I love hockey romances right now and I really enjoyed the beginning I ended up giving it a 3.75 and I really enjoyed the whole like tensiony her having to move in with him the plot basically is before I start I'm not kidding this book I don't know what it is about this book it has left my brain I read it like a two weeks ago like a week not even I read it a week ago and it has left my brain already the plot basically basically is this girl she's trying to get like a marketing job in this NHL team and so she has to start somewhere so she starts as an assistant to a player and he ends up being someone that she went to high school with when she meets him she thinks he doesn't recognize her because he doesn't say anything and so she pretends he does she doesn't recognize him either so like it goes back between their POVs and they're both like holy shit it's her or like holy shit it's him because they both like had crushes on each other in high school but like neither of them knew because they were in different classes and she was I guess like kind of a dork in high school anyway so he like fires her because he's like I'm not being distracted during my season like I'm not doing all that and so she is like you fucking fired me and like goes and like knocks on his door and is like what the literal hell was that for and like he ends up giving her a job back long story short she doesn't have any money and she's been crashing with her sister and she's like having a meltdown over it he offers her a room at his place because like he's gone a lot anyway for hockey and she's there to basically take care of his dog anyway so like it would just be easier so of course it's like forced proximity they end up falling for each other she wants to be a singer she doesn't want a job and like the marketing it's just her parents and so he like really supports her in all this and it's very cute like they they work each other out they find out that like the whole time they knew who each other were and it was were they knew, they both knew who the other person was the whole time but I'm gonna be so blatantly honest I read this on my kindle while I was getting my hair done and they kept giving me wine so I was like tipsy while reading it and so the end of it kind of is out of my brain. The end, I do remember the end bothered me. Wasn't my favorite thing in the whole world. The third act conflict was kind of stupid to me. Like it wasn't that big of a deal. And I was just like, 
Oh, okay. It was okay. 3.75 out of 5. Not like the best thing in the world. And then I did a reread of Magnolia Parks because I read this in 2022. And I've really wanted, like, I feel like Magnolia Parks has picked up a lot. And the most recent one came out, like, this week or something. So I wanted to reread it with a new mindset. Because when I read it a couple years ago, I didn't understand the relationship. I went into it completely blind. And the relationship really threw me for a loop. And it was just like super toxic to the point where I couldn't enjoy it. So I feel like my reread, I enjoyed it more. I ended up bumping up to a four out of five because I knew it was coming. I knew it was toxic. But I will say like this book really hurts my feelings. <laughs> like the quotes, Jessa Hastings has beautiful writing. Her quotes in here are insane. All of her quotes about love and like first loves, how many loves you get in a lifetime, like everything that she writes about love is really beautiful. That being said, very heartbreaking and it hurts my feelings. I didn't cry while reading the book. It just like gutted me to read about things that you can almost relate to and it sucks that you can relate to because this isn't a fun book <laughs> like this isn't a cute romancy book but I am excited to read the next ones I don't know when I'll start it but I'll I'm excited to read the next ones and then I read betting on you gave it a two and a half out of five I just didn't relate to the characters I thought he was a little too mean I can't get behind a character who's like I like her so much that it scares me so I'm gonna be mean to her and push her away and that's exactly what he did but he didn't even have a good reason for pushing her away like it was just it rubbed me the wrong way and he treated her really shittily like he was super shitty to her during a time when she really needed him and then she just forgave him and was like yes like I love you let's be together so I don't know it just rubbed me the wrong way and I didn't really like him and then I read today actually I read two really short like novellas on Kindle the first one was Squeak <laughs> These are both really weird novellas, I'm not gonna lie. So Squeak, I gave a 2 out of 5. <laughs> and the whole plot of this book, if you have not read it, it's like very short, like 50 something pages. It is these two boys, these two guys, who were originally balloon animals. I'm probably gonna describe this incorrectly, by the way. They were balloon animals. <laughs> And they were put under this curse by a woman who could change them into humans for her pleasure. So they were basically sex slaves to this woman. Could be turned into humans when she wanted them to, but could also like turn them into humans without parts. Like Ken dolls. So they like ended- they- <laughs> While they were being held captive together, they found each other and were like lovers, I guess, because they found love in each other. So they escaped together and are trying to find an artist to draw these like, I forgot what they're even called, but like these symbols that they need to break the curse. This girl they find who ends up being the perfect match to do it, ends up like hooking up with one of them and... <laughs> They bite each other and that mates them for life, which breaks the curse or something. There can only be one person who mates them. And so the girl who took them, the sex slave girl, can't do it anymore because this girl's now her, his mate. So then they are mated. So she mates with the other guy too. So it's like a little thruple. And then the sex slave girl shows up to take them and she's like, bye, and gives her a kiss of death and shoves her off her balcony. It was insane. It wasn't unenjoyable, I would say, but I just was like, what the hell did I just read? But anyways, um, and and then I read Riding the Headless Horseman. <laughs> Which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it was even shorter. It was like 40 something pages. And it followed this girl who's like a witch. And the headless horseman is like the myth of the town who's like death. And like when you die, he comes to get you. So she is like just roaming the area where he resides. And he takes her. And she's like, are you here to kill me? And he's like, no, I, I want to keep you. Like, I'm not death. I work for death. And I'm not going to give you to death because I want to keep you. And so basically they like just have sex. But he doesn't have a head. He literally only has a pumpkin head and he could take it off. And so she ends up falling in love with him in under four pages. And she leaves him. She can go back to her realm on like the one night of Halloween only. So he's like, what the fuck? She left me. But she left to go find his head because she wants to kiss him. And his head is buried where his body is buried. So she left. She went and found his head, came back, attached it to his body. And then it was happily ever after. That was pretty much it. But I gave it a two and a half. It was better than Squeak. It like wasn't an unenjoyable enjoyable read either so but that was it for my January reads um hopefully next year next year imagine I did read a book for an entire year next month I hope to be a little more reedy <laughs> but I doubt it because I'm super busy this month too so I've got two comic cons and a wedding this month so very busy I'm gonna do my best to read and listen to audiobooks so I can keep up to date with all my books but if I have another short month I apologize <laughs> I will do my best but thanks for watching hopefully next month will be better if not I'll see you next month regardless because I'm gonna do it even if I have two books so thanks for watching thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one